Welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. If this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the description below. Now, I want to make a comment here that this is not sponsored by anybody, so your support is always appreciated. And speaking of that, there is a handout for this episode uh, for the channel members. So if you want to join channel membership, all you have to do is click on the join button underneath this video and select the information access level. Access to the handouts are in the community tab in the blog posts, and I produce them uh, frequently. Um, not for every episode, but most of them. All right, now, if you have watched any of the episodes before, you know that I am a big fan of keeping good quality research notes. I know this sounds like a little bit of extra work uh, in keeping a separate document, but I promise if you spend a little bit of time and keep those research notes one short little paragraph at a time, you, it'll save you a ton of time in your research. Well, after a while, research notes can get quite long, and so I'm gonna show you how to insert a table of contents in your research notes right at the beginning so that you can jump around quickly to the subject that you're actively researching. Before I jump into this subject, though, I wanna make sure that you understand just a brief comment about uh, why we keep research notes. And the answer is so that you can keep all the details and all the information about each ancestor. You can't keep all of that on your online trees. There's just no way. This is your opportunity to create your research notes. You wanna keep them as a timeline in chronological order and with all the activities and all of the source information about your ancestors. And so keep one set of research notes per ancestor and keep them you know, in chronological order. Now, once we jump into the demonstration, it'll become clear as to the level of information and detail that you can keep uh, in your research notes. Oh, and one more thing, don't feel like you need to do research notes on every ancestor in your entire family tree. I only keep research notes on those that I'm actively researching, but that does allow me to come back to those research notes, maybe five or 10 years later, I start working on that line again and everything's nice and neat and orderly and in chronological order. And it's really not that hard because a lot of times you're only adding it one paragraph at a time. All right, well, that's it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here's how you can create a table of contents in a set of research notes. And I have created here just a blank generic set of research notes to, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So in order to insert a table of contents, before you can actually do that, you need to set some headings and you do this across the top. So I've just created just some bold, these are just normal, font you can see this is normal font and it's uh, I did this in bold now what I need to do is change it to heading number one or heading number two so in an effort to just show you how this works I'm going to create heading number one here and then underneath that of course you know this heading might say something like born in 1802 in so-and-so state and whatever and then there's a bunch of stuff about my ancestor here right and I'll show you on a real set of notes here in a moment, but I just want to show you how this works. So then in heading number two, I'm going to, I'm going to use heading number two. Now watch what happens up here in this, in this field up, up in this styles guide, you've got a lot of different styles you can play with, but what we are after for the purpose of a table of contents is just the headings. And so we're going to create heading number two. Now look, heading number three just appeared when I clicked heading number two. So now I'm gonna click heading number three, and I'm gonna assign it heading number three, and now heading number four appears, and I'm gonna assign this heading number four. Now there's a reason why I am showing you this in this way, because I want to now insert a table of contents. Now I'm gonna move my cursor to the very top because that's where I want my table of contents to be in my research notes. This will allow me to jump around in my research notes quickly, especially when research notes are really long. So we wanna to go to the reference tab 
and we want to come over here to the table of contents and hit the down arrow and we have a couple choices to choose from. Now you can do this manually. I prefer just to use a straight up automatic. It's either going to be one of these two. I'm going to choose this one. And when I do, you can see how they indent. So heading number two is a subset of heading number one. Heading number three is a subset of heading number two and so on. Note that heading number four did not show up in our table of contents. Just saying. I typically use just heading number two for my table of contents. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that over on a real set of research notes. So here is a real set of research notes for my uh, grandfather. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, this information and I'm going to call it heading number two. I'm going to take this information right here and not I'm not including the uh, footnote reference. See the number two there? I'm not including that. Okay. Heading number two. If I were to include that, it changes the format of that two. It becomes a giant number two. It's not a superscript number two. And then I'd have to go back and fix it. And I just don't feel like messing with it. So I'm going to take all this bolded information that I have here and I'm going to say heading number two. And then I'm going to go over to the next page. Even my little about 1919. I'm going to say heading number two. The 1920 census, heading number two, 1923, when he gets married, heading number two, um, social security, I should have had a space in there. Uh, I'm just going to come up to this point and say heading number two, and you're getting the idea, okay? So you do this through the whole document. Then what you do is you come back to the top. Again, you put your cursor at the top because that's where I want my table of contents to be. I'm going to set it for left justified. And I'm going to go back to the reference tab, which is right here. I'm going to go to table of contents and I'm going to pick this first one and bada bing. All of that stuff that I had created as, as heading number two is now listed here nice and neat. Now the cool part about it is I can click in here and see where it says control click to follow. Watch what happens. If I hit hold the control key down, I assume that's a command key on Mac and click it immediately jumps me to that part of the research notes. Now when you have research notes that are super long, right, this becomes really convenient to be able to pop around to the different parts of the research notes. So now let me show you what it looks like when it's completely, uh, completely finished. So this is that same set of research notes, uh, completely finished. Uh, I have I have added all of the headings. In fact, this about 1919, I actually made it as a heading number three so that it would indent a little bit because it's just a comment that I was making. So now I can uh, control click anywhere and it pops me right to where I was going. Kind of cool, huh? So one important note that I need to point out is that if uh, you are coming down here, I'm just going to type something. All right, so let's pretend for a moment that I want to insert something here. So let's say in 1919 something happens. He's maybe in the military and uh, there's a bunch of information. Maybe it's a, a draft registration card or something. I mean, I'm just adding nonsense here. All right, so I'm going to put a little space in there because I like spaces between my uh, items. So now I don't have to bold this anymore. All I have to do is come up here and hit heading number two and it gets added to my table of contents. Now let's double check that. Well, wait a minute. It's the about 1919 is in here, but the one that I did about the military record is not. So what happened? Well, what you need to do is you need to click on the table of contents here and update the table. So we hit update table and you have two choices. You can update just the page numbers or you can update the entire table. I don't see any reason why you would not want to update the entire table. Um, this is typically what I do, but you could if you just had inserted information and didn't actually insert any more headers, you could just update the uh, page numbers because if you added five more paragraphs or something to one specific entry that already had a header, then all you would have to do is update the page numbers, which would be right here. But in this case, because we're missing the 1919 entry about the military records that I just added, then we would update the entire table. We hit OK. 
and now it's been added and it updated all of all of the uh, page numbers um, should they have changed I like to just stick with that that very first uh, table of contents the only real difference that I see is that it actually spells out table of contents whereas I just put contents in there which is fine with me lastly don't forget to save save early save often I know that if you have it set that word will auto save but I'm just in the habit of hit and save a lot so make sure you save before you close as a reminder the handout is available for information access level channel members make sure you join the join button is below the video there are more videos on the screen for you now about research notes it is time for you to do a little binge watching all right, until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.